Well, I think that, you know, we have bigger problems in our country than to worry about people who are exercising their freedom of speech. And um, uh, I, North Korea is a big problem. Uh, job creation is a big, major problem. You know, making sure that our schools are better and uh, I can just keep going, you know. And so these are the things that he should be concentrating on. And I think that we elected him to concentrate on those things. And so um, what I'm disappointed at is that the fact that, you know, these young men who are saying, hey, there's problems in our community in urban America and nobody's looking to address these issues and problems. That's what Colin really was uh, not standing up for the national anthem for because he wanted, you know, uh, the shootings in our community. We, he wanted better books and computers in our schools. And so uh, I think that uh, all these players uh, are exercising their right. And, um, and I think that uh, we have, the president should be really focusing in on the issues at hand of our country and of uh, the people who live in our beautiful country and not those who are saying, hey, this is my right. This is my right to do what I'm doing. And, um, and I was so proud of the owners and coaches for backing the players in the NFL. And I also was proud of all of us uh, from Co Commissioner Adam Silver and all the teams that back Golden State because it was important to say that, hey, we back Golden State 150 percent. And this is the decision they made in terms of, well, I guess the president made it for them. Uh, but uh, we got to move on past this and uh, get the country heading in the right direction. And so, and that's it. And our players have been great. We had a great meeting this morning and, and then we will have a meeting later on and Luke's gonna do that. And so, that's it. And it won't take away from our excitement about tomorrow having training camp. Well, what, what, what excites you most about this season? Ahead? Oh man, I think just, first of all, the talent level that we have and the competition at every single position. Um, and then <clears throat> the way we're going to play, and Luke wants to coach a up and down game, and um, so that means that we've got to play great defense, rebound the basketball, get get out into that fast break, and let Lonzo do his thing with you know Bi and Brooke and KCP and uh, Julius and you know Larry Nance, on and on and on, you know. And so it's, I, I can't wait us to get started tomorrow. As you know, I'm a gym rat. I love being in the gym. Uh, so I can't wait till tomorrow starts. And uh, I told him already I'm sweating like I'm playing. <laughs> and uh, so this is great. Besides from his passing ability, you know, his ability to see the floor, what, do you, what does he really bring to What do you really like about Lonzo? No, well, he brings uh, his basketball IQ. He's a very intelligent basketball player. And uh, his teammates like him and they're rallying behind him. That's what I really like. Uh, he's a good, good young man. And um, uh, he's a natural leader. You know, when, you, when you've uh, won a state championship, he turned UCLA around, headed in the right direction. Um, he makes everybody around him better. But also, he gives you a pass that you can score. This is, some other guy used to do that. I don't know his name, but some other guy used to do that. <laughs> and so uh, we needed a leader on this team, and uh, we have one now. But I think every guy has been working so hard during this offseason. We asked them to improve on their body. We asked them to improve their game. And uh, I had demanded that or they wouldn't be playing. And so everybody came back better, stronger, body fat dropped. So we're excited about Several it. Several guys have told me that they like being around him, <clears throat> just, the, just the way he is. How much does that speed up the kind of chemistry and unity of the team? Oh, it speeds it up because he didn't come in here as the number two pick. He didn't act like that guy. He just came in here like he was one of the guys. And uh, he has a great sense of humor when he's around the guys. 
Um, they have drawn to him, and you can see that him and uh, B.I. and you look at uh, Kuzma and all the other young players that we have, they're all hanging out. And so it's really refreshing to see that. How do you protect them from the pressure? Uh, how do you encourage them with the pressure, especially with the West getting so deep with Carmelo going to OKC? And well, well, you can't protect them. You know, you, it's, uh, uh, he knows and I know that the West is deep. And, and also, it's just, you know, every night he's going to go up against a great, great Hall of Fame type point guard. You know, but uh, this is why we we lace him up. This is why he wanted to get drafted to the Lakers. This is why we picked him, so we can put him in those type of games and those situations. And uh, man, shoot, he'll be okay. He'll, he's going to play his game. He's not going to get caught up into individual battles. He's going to play his game and help us win games. What are you impressed oh. by Brandon Ingram coming back in the way he looks as far as adding more weight and, and being more fit to what the, the program that you put him on? Well, I was very happy because I think this is going to be a breakout season for B.I. And we need him to step up and be the leading scorer on this team and, and really just be aggressive on the offensive end. And um, I think he, him and uh, Lonzo will have a great uh, chemistry uh, like myself and James Worthy used to have where I knew I could look at James and he knew what I knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to happen. And then James got on, the, on that wing, and boy, there was nobody in basketball like James Worthy being on that wing. And I think it's going to be the same with those two guys. And I'm looking forward to uh, them forming that chemistry on the court uh, starting tomorrow. Now, I want to warn everybody that, you know, this team has, what, six new faces and then and so many young players. So it's going to take us a while to get the chemistry that we're looking for. But we're going to get it eventually. But, uh, you know, when we're looking at how many new faces we have on this team, and they're playing key roles, too, that chemistry is going to be a key for us. Both Julius and, and Brooke were talking playoffs. How do you measure success for this team? Is it playoffs or is it just something else? Them getting better. All I want to see is them grow and take their game to another level. Um, I'm not, I'm, 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 a, I'm a realist, so look, the West is tough. The West is awfully tough. And then, you know, we got a lot of babies that's got to grow up real fast, you know. And so, but I think this team has the talent to contend for a playoff spot. But if we don't, it's not going to stop us from having a, a good season. And so all I want us to do is have a good season where free agents look and say, oh, man, I can see myself in that lineup and with that team, and we can step up to another level. So that's what I'm looking for. Magic, so much of this season is about the next off season. So in your role, how do you keep this team concentrated and focused on what needs to be done no, for 17 No, that's my job, is to worry about the next season. Their job is this season right now. And we're not talking about next season. We're going to talk about this season. So that starts tomorrow. Uh, one thing I never bring up to them or we talk about is next season. What we're worried about what happens starting tomorrow on. We're excited about, you know, again, the balance of the lineup. We're excited about our size and length. When you think about Lonzo coming in at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, you know, 6'5", our whole starting lineup is 6'5", and 6'6", six, six over, you know, so it's going to be great. And the versatility that we can have that we have on the team. In the fourth quarter, we can have a lot of guys out there that can uh, score and that can defend too. So uh, next season is next season. We can't do anything about next season to next season. Sure. And what I'm looking forward to is these guys just getting better and better and competing every single night. What's gonna be our DNA? Play tough defense, rebound, and get out into that fast break and do our thing. You, you do have one deadline before the start of the season, Julius Randle's eligible for an extension. Mm -hmm. Is that something we, we that... don't talk about contracts with okay. to you guys? Sure. So next question. So it. much attention has been on, on the young guys, the new ones specifically, Lonzo coming in. How have the returners like Jordan Clarkson, and Julius Randle, the spotlight isn't necessarily on, reacted to? Oh, well, they've been fine. Julius is going to play his game. Matter of fact, again, he'll be better with all the talent that we have, right? Because Brooke Lopez, people don't realize 
the key to this team is really Lopez because he's going to draw that center out. So Julius will have more room to operate now once he attacks his man. When they run the pick and roll with Brooke and Lonzo, that big man got to make a decision. What's going to happen? Because if they take Lonzo, he's going to kick it back to Brooke. He, had, he made it, what, 134 threes last year. So uh, we're excited to have him to go along with Randall's going to be fine. He's going to play his game. The key for us is Jordan Clarkson coming in off that bench. And I told him he should be like a six man of the year candidate. And I, and I, all summer I've been stressing to him, six man of the year, six man of the year, six man of the year. And I said, you have the, uh, the game, the talent, and the ability to be in that conversation. Now it's up to you. You got to improve. He, he needs to improve on his ball handling. He's been doing that. He needs to improve on his shot. He's been doing that. So I've been pushing him to be better, and he's better. And I'm looking for big things from Jordan. Do you have, oh, Dan, you? Hi. Hi. So, have you had any conversations with Lonzo just about the spotlight and what it means to be the Lakers point? Oh, yeah, we've had conversations. And I told him he's just like me. You know, when I came here, there were a lot of expectations, you know, put on my shoulders and put on the Lakers as an a, a organization. And, uh, you know, I had guys like Jerry West and Bill Sharman and Chick Hearns to talk to. And then this guy named Jim Hill gave me some advice as well. And so, uh, you know, I think now, as I told him, I'm, I'm his boss, but I'm also his big brother. So when he comes up into my office, I don't want to be his boss. I just want to be his big brother and, and give him some, either a pat on the back or give him some information to help him. You know, and I sit on those stands every practice and then I come down and make pointers after practice. Hey man, maybe you think about this, think about that. So I think for him, uh, he's gonna help me do my job better and I'm gonna help him hopefully do his job better. There, he's got a lot of off the court things that he and his family, the brand, you know, yeah. Facebook show and the yeah. shoes and all yeah. that. Has that stuff been, has the Facebook show been around the facility? Uh, the they, they were supposed to come around. I don't know if that happened or not, but uh, we don't concern ourselves with that. Only time I'm going to concern myself with what he does off the court if it's affecting his play on the court. But, you know, right now, I think it's awesome. His family is great. They came out Saturday. We had a big Laker uh, picnic. Every family member was here supporting him and supporting us as a Laker organization. His dad is wonderful with me. I'm cool with him. And uh, uh, so it's just time. I think for him, tomorrow is going to be great. I think he's tired of all this. He just want to get, he's like me. I just want to play. I think he just want to play. And then Saturday night, sold out in Anaheim. Wow. That's when we're going to get to see him play. Irvin, you, you've talked a lot about him being similar to you on the court and even the type of pressure he's facing. His leadership style is completely different. He's a mm -hmm. much quieter guy. Yeah. What do you think makes his leadership style effective? What have you seen in terms of guys gravitating to I gotta, I got to coach him how to cuss a guy out. Because <laughs> all you old heads, see, I got some old heads well, over here. Me. See, all these old guys, they know I didn't play that. You know, like, No, I, I think that Lonzo style is excellent. Actually, I'm kind of happy that he's not like me because when I came in, I had veterans. So I didn't have to do, I, you know, I had to be that way, right? He's got young guys. The game is different today. And so I think everybody was waiting to see what was this dude going to do. Is he going to come in like a prima donna? Is he going to come in, you know, uh, won everything? You know what? He's been the opposite. That's why they fell in love with him. He's just been Lonzo. Just one of the guys. They play video games together. They laugh. They talk trash together. And it's been, for me, refreshing to see because we've never had one problem with him. Um, and so, yes, his leadership style is different from mine, but it's the same. And in today's basketball, maybe my style wouldn't work. Really, you think about my style, I'm in your face, da, 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 da. I don't think the kids today would go for my style. This is the style he has to have in today's game, and it, it works. Is his personality perfect for LA? It's perfect, man. He's a cool, good-looking young man. 
with the game to match. Wow, that's L.A. <laughs> I mean, Lonzo, I mean, is, uh, he's very inquisitive, and mm -hmm. I know he asks a lot of questions to get better. From wow. point guard to point guard, what is one point guard-related thing that he's asked you? Well, we talked about a lot of different things, you know, what I wanted him to do. I had the habit to, in college, you can jump in the air and uh, then make your decision. Now, in, in what we saw in summer league, he jumped in the air and got some, got two or three charges. And I pulled him aside and said, look, man, that's what they're going to be looking for you to do. So you might want to stay on the floor and make the decision. I had the same issue when I first started, too. I jumped. And then I made my decision, and then that guy didn't move, and I got a few charges called. So we talked about things like that, pick and roll, um, you know. And so as the season goes on, we'll be talking basketball, basketball, basketball. Um, this week will be excellent because I will be in the gym just watching. And uh, if he has any um, questions, he, can, he knows he can always come to me. I told him that. My door is always open. But I like him. You know, you, you know how you like somebody and you want to see them do well? This dude here deserves that, right? Because he's, he's just, okay, I'm just, I'm just Lonzo. I'm blase. I'm good. Everybody making a big fuss about him, but he's not big, making a big fuss about himself. Is that what you like? He's just yeah. So yeah, he's cool. Like, hey, I'm good. He just wants to win. That's, and he's a gym rat. I love that. We got a lot of guys that just like to be in the gym. B.I., yeah, if we don't stop him from coming, he'll be in here all day and night, right? And, um, and I think that we enjoy having guys who want to be in it. Kyle Kuzma, in the gym. You know, all these guys love to be in the gym now, so it's excellent for us. Larry Nance, again, he's improved. He was in the gym, so it's great. How about the physicality of uh, Lonzo? What do you think as far as his body and during 82 games? Well, we'll see. You know, I can't tell you until it all happens, you know. But the good thing about it is, you know, Tyler Ennis can bag him up. Um, and then we can always throw Jordan at the point guard position. See, it's different from any team that we've had before in the last four years. We, the versatility of this team is completely different. As you know, that uh, give Luke a lot of credit because he put the ball in B.I.'s hand last year to have him be like a point forward. So we can do a lot of different things that probably we couldn't do in years past because the versatility of this roster. And that's why we changed uh, so many players, you know, out and brought so many new players in. And then, you know, KCP has set the the tone on the defense. So we needed somebody to set the tone on the defensive end, and he'll do that for us. Was LeBar the, the, uh, LeBar the star of the barbecue? And what What'd you say? Was LeBar the fun of the barbecue? The star no, 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 the no, and no. How, he, how's it been with him? he didn't even, he was just eating barbecue and, <laughs> and enjoying himself. Um, all the family members were the stars. Really, the kids were the stars. You know, they had a good time. And he's been fun to deal with. We've been talking man to man, real talk about basketball. And we, matter of fact, he was just here uh, last week. We had a great conversation. And, uh, um, you know, I told him, you know, uh, different things that I'm um, looking forward to seeing his son perform and how. And again, it's the doors open for his son, but also for him anytime he needs to talk about. Anything. Do you, you feel like you and you Le LeVar have to have an ongoing kind of dialogue because of how visible he is? I'm and sorry. Do you feel like you and LeVar need to have an ongoing dialogue because of how visible and vocal he is? No. I'm not going to monitor LeVar. My job, I got 15 dudes I'm going to have to monitor. And that's it. That's who I'm going to monitor. LeVar is a, a grown man. He's a great father. I wish you guys could see him with his wife. This man... He brought her uh, last week, helping her, you know, getting her to be stronger and walk better. And I saw the same thing at his house. LeVar's having fun with all of this, you know. Uh, give him credit. He understands how to market the big baller brand. But my job is not to monitor him. Now, if something happens where it affects his son and it affects his son on the court, then maybe I'll pull him aside. Hey, blah, 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 blah. But <clears throat> I don't, they said, did you see LeVar on TV yesterday? Nope. 
You gonna watch it? No. Nope. Fifteen guys, that's all I'm concerned with. And I'm concerned about his son getting off to a good start and a fast start. That's what I'm concerned about. Irvin, is, a, is defense a skill or is it an effort? It's a combination, you know, and so, but it's, it's, it's a desire, right? And we bought the best defensive player in from uh, um, what conference is Connecticut in, whatever. I mean, I'm sorry, Villanova in, the Big East or whatever it was that they're playing in now. Uh, Josh Hart, he, he is unbelievable on the defensive end. You think KCP, that's that's what he lived for. And then, you know, Bogut, uh, Lopez position on the defensive end. So we understand we have some guys who can uh, play on the defensive end. So we got to get better individually and as a team. And if we can do that, then we're going to get so many more shot opportunities. And I told him about our Lakers. Michael Cooper used to set the tone for us defensively, and Byron and James. And so, and the other guys, if we wasn't as good individual, but we were great team defensive players. But once we got that ball, it was, it was we got to go. We got to go. So we got to play defense first before we can get that basketball. So we've been stressing that if we're in, if we're in better shape and conditioning, then we can also have a better effort on the defensive end, and that's what we're looking for. But we had to have somebody with a mindset of that. That's why signing KCP was really big for us.